Hello and welcome to Mr. Excalibur. This is Arthur and today we're looking at the Monotoshi Koken. Um, from what I understand, that word means guardian in Japanese. Um, this one is very much a heavy cutter and um, when I was looking at this brand, Munatoshi, there were a couple other uh, models that I wanted to look at, but they weren't in stock. <laughs> uh, so I'm finding that this brand in particular, especially um, at the only two distributors that currently sell this, um, it's a little hard to find some of the models that they have. Now that may be currently because of the times. This is another company that contracts out to China. Um, several distributors that have um, Japanese style katanas coming from China or are, are experiencing those kind of supply problems, understandably. Um, but um, this one in particular there were quite a few models that were either sold out or just not available anymore. Um, this particular model I actually haven't seen that many reviews of and so it interested me. Uh, it also interested me because it resembles some of the other heavy cutters that are out there. Things like the uh, Warrior Katana from Cold Steel or the Raptor series by Katz Hanway. I've talked to other reviewers about this and they don't necessarily agree uh, that those comparisons are, are qualified, but I think they are. And you guys will see why when you guys see the, uh, the upcoming footage. The only cutting footage that I have from someone else is actually from Munatoshi. They, they did some promotional footage to advertise this model when it came out, whenever that was. And so that's really the only other footage that's out there. And I've included some clips from that. Um, so before, of course, we get into the meat of the review, we have the unboxing, taking a look at how it came to me. Um, and then this one came to me from Arms and Armory. Um, I believe that's who it was. I may have that wrong, <laughs> but I have the link down below. So if I if I said that website wrong, I do have the correct link on where to find these down below. Um, may have been Swords and Armory. This is the first time I've actually ordered for them, so excuse me if I didn't get the name right. So we're going to look at the unboxing. Then we're going to look at the footage from Munatoshi on this particular uh, model. And then, of course, uh, my own experience with it, and then kind of a wrap-up and the general overview. So let's take a look at that footage right now. We're here unboxing the Munitoshi Koken, or Koken, uh, which, as I mentioned previously, is Japanese for guardian. That's also how it's uh, how it's advertised. The boxing on this katana was pretty straightforward. You had an, a shipping outer box and then an inner box which contained the sword itself. Uh, I always actually like it when they double box these things. I have had a couple instances, just as a point of comparison, where that was not the case. Um, and without mentioning any specific distributors, I had ordered two Dynasty Forge swords, not directly from Dynasty Forge, but from another distributor. And um, the, the result was both swords were simply wrapped in packing paper, were not in any swords at all, and they were left inside the bare packing box. Uh, the other example, actually two examples, were with Cold Steel, where the box you're looking at right now, which the sword is actually in, was this was the box that was used to ship in and that's been the case in a in a in a couple times where they have um they, they've taken the the actual box that the the sword is in and they don't put an outer box around it um some swords have come banged up that way others have not so it's it's kind of a 
different thing. Now, here was something that was a little disconcerting when I got it right out of the box, and that was all the fittings above where the hand rests on the sukkah were all loose. Um, that was really disappointing considering the blade was absolutely razor sharp. It was, it was quite impressive how sharp that blade was right out of the box. Uh, it was very reminiscent of you know things like Ronin Katana or the Raptor series. Just a very very, uh, a very very nice wide cutting blade and a very sharp blade right out of the box. One thing I'm noticing here is that the Edo wrap is a little loose, and so you know a bunch of things kind of right out of the box, which were a little disconcerting. But again, focusing on the as some people refer to it as the pointy pointy stabby stabby part. Um, and that is, uh, you know, it's, it's the part that counts. Now, you give me an idea, look at this. I'm literally just shaving that paper in pieces. I mean, it really was impressive how, you know, for those of you who want that, uh, you know, shave the hair off the back of your arm kind of sharp, this sword would be for you. Um, so that was, uh, that, that was pretty impressive. I was just really taken back by kind of the loose furniture. I've bought quite a few of these things by now, and none of them were quite as loose as this thing was. Um, the side was all in very good shape, and uh, it was a little on the stiff side. Trying to get the thing out of it was a little rough. Um, it felt like it had been jammed in once too many times, but other than that, the side looked just fine. The Segeo cord was of you know average quality it wasn't really thick but it wasn't overly light like i've seen on on some uh, some of the hanway swords um but uh so it was uh, it, it was really nice it, it had a nice fit to it a uh, little bit of of sigh rattle there but uh, nothing you know really bad so i mean some good and bad impressions right out of the box uh good packing so you know, we're looking forward here to seeing what else we can do with the Murotoshi Koken. As the title said, it's my turn with the Munitoshi Koken. This thing really is in the category of, in my opinion, of heavy cutters. Um, it's designed the same way, it's made with similar steel, it has the same feeling to it. Um, so it, uh, it really does kind of fit into that category of, 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 of heavy cutting. And so I decided to really put it through its paces, uh, just practicing here, just some some a few draws, you know, nothing uh, nothing fancy, just kind of getting the feel for the thing. For a standard length katana, this has a, you know roughly about a about a around a 28 inch blade, and has a standard length suka. It's about between 10 and 11 inches long. The thing had a nice solid feel to it outside of, as I mentioned during the unboxing footage, the uh, the loose, you know, the loose um, tuba and 
um, fittings. Um, I mean, it, uh, it it had that nice weighted feel of a heavy cutter. The story on this uh, on this katana was pretty dramatic. Uh, this is a uh, it has a more of an Okasaki tip to it, which gave it a much you know just that much more of a cutting surface. And so it um, you know there I am showing the kind of the, the loose fittings again. I have to say they kind of really that, that really bugged me. Um, I actually really liked this sword and how it feels. The the blade just looked like it could be a lot of fun um, for those of you looking at going kind of going. Well, you know, I might not get this if you know if that's going to be this guy's experience. Let me caution those of you that are watching this. Going okay, I was interested in this model and now I'm not. These things are, for the most part, are assembled in China. That literally is thousands of miles away in a different environment. And for anybody who knows about these things, they know that there is a certain amount of luck of the draw when these things come clear over from there. They're sitting in a warehouse, often it gets really cold and really hot, and if they arrive at your front doorstep after they've been sitting and traveling in those various environments and the fittings are all still pretty tight, it's a pretty good testament to quality control for that particular company or that particular distributor and, you know, that they come to you all nice and with, with tight fittings. Um, as you guys can see here, these water bottles, and these are heavier juice bottles, are just absolutely, you know, nothing for this thing. I sliced through the top end of that and it really was just, it really just kind of hacked through things. So anyway, what I was saying about, um, you know, how you feel about this thing, if thing is, uh, if it's, you know, coming to you loose, um, there's a pretty good chance that if you were to order one of these models, you might get one where all the fittings are nice and and tight so you don't have to worry about them them being all loose I, I wouldn't exactly hold that against it because I know what tends to happen what can happen with these products in transit sometimes things just loosen up so um, you know a word to the wise uh, something about um, plastic bottle cutting one thing you want to be careful with with these plastic bottles. Some people say, "Well, it's not really a good test of the sword." Um, actually, it, it is. Uh, it's a real good to. It's a really good testament to how durable the blade is. But it's not a very scientific one. I'll tell you that much. Some of these bottles, some of which you're seeing here, are actually pretty thick plastic, especially around the the neck, the opening of the bottle, and. The result can be, you know, especially with a sword that has a particularly hard edge, yeah, it cuts through tatami mats like, you know, a hot knife through butter, but all of a sudden you're whacking it through plastic and you're wondering why you're getting chips and dings on your blade. Um, you know, and so be careful when you're using these things, even when it's, um, even it's when it's, you know, a sharp sword like this one. Now, this is a new trick that I've picked up recently just to see what it's like using a a, uh, a sword on a empty milk carton. Now that one literally just filleted it open. And you can see that it didn't bounce much like you normally would with a sword that's not all that sharp. This thing just sliced right through it. Here we are with the TV box, um, you know, some hardened cardboard with some styrofoam in the center. Didn't go through it that much. I don't know if it was my form. It's not that heavy of a blade, um, but you know, here's a good idea of how far it went. It went about you know five, six, seven inches down into it. So, you know, all in all, this thing proved to be a pretty versatile backyard cutter. Um, I would imagine because of how sharp it is, it's probably good for tatami mats as well. I can't really say for sure. Uh, you guys did see the footage from Munatoshi themselves having it go through bamboo. Um, it does tend to do that very well too. So as an all-around cutter, the blade 
they've got on this sword does tend to, you know, it, it delivers. And for a 300-ish sword, um, it fits into that, you know, category of, of heavy cutters. Okay, guys, one more time. The lesson with any of these swords, they are a high carbon steel of some form or another, even ones that have various other alloys mixed into them. You leave them wet, and in the saya, you pull them out, they will be a brown, rusty mess. Uh, please make sure you use some kind of solvent to wipe off the residue. You don't know what else was in those bottles after you were cutting through them. Maybe it was oil, maybe it was old milk, maybe it was juice. All those things are very corrosive to a carbon steel blade. So use something to wipe it off and then use some kind of solvent to clean it off. And you'll have a nice happy sword to play with the next time. My overall impression of this sword was that it, um, it has a really, really nice blade. This thing had a nice, wide cutting blade. And as you guys heard from the footage during the unboxing and during the cutting, this thing came out of the box razor sharp. This is one of the sharper swords that I've seen. And it had that nice, long, old Kasaki tip at the end which really lent to having just you know an even longer surface with which to cut with. Uh, let's take a look at it. So there it is. Now the only other katana that I've seen so far that has a wider or as wide of a blade as this is the Cold Steel Warrior Katana, um, which, um, which I've already done a review of. This blade came with a nice heft to it, almost, almost a little bit too much, but considering that it's a, it's a heavy cutter, it's kind of what I expected, so it was, uh, it's still nice in the hand, nice to feel. So let's uh, let's have a little bit of a chat about it. Um, <clears throat> first of all, it's 1060 steel. Uh, this is the same steel that Ronin Katana generally uses. And if you've seen my videos on those, you see just how tough it is. Um, that, of course, is saying that, you know, Monotoshi is uh, tempering their blades the same way that they do and there's no real guarantee that that's the case um, but uh, 1060 steel is the same kind um, I will say that they really got this thing really really sharp as you guys saw in the cutting footage this thing had no problem at all slicing right through an empty milk bottle now that's usually a sign of just how short, uh, how sharp these things are usually it just kind of just bounces away <clears throat> but given that this thing, you know, just sliced right through it, um, that was pretty impressive. It didn't, it came with a downside though. 
Um, as I mentioned during the unboxing, um, there were quite a few fittings issues. Uh, we have, you know, we have a loose, you hear that? That's a loose Zuba, loose Hibaki, loose Seppa, basically everything up top here. It's got a bit of a jiggle to it. Believe it or not, at this date, as of this video, this is the first one of these swords from various manufacturers that I have gotten where that has been the case. And I have to say that was disappointing because, as you guys saw in some of the pictures that I posted, uh, the casting quality, even though this is a, you know, a sub $400 sword, the casting quality on all the fittings is rather nice. It's got a bit of this um, kind of nice textured uh, casting on both the Fushi and Kushida. And then on the Tsuba, you can see, I guess, what looks to be kind of almost uh, like a, uh, a bamboo pattern on it, which is really nice. It's, it's, it's got some nice fittings. It's just a shame that this one kind of came with a bit of a rattle. Now I know there are some of you guys out there that are saying, hey, you know, it's really easy. All you got to do is pop out the pegs and put in this and put in that. Um, I will admit that I look at these from a little bit more of a pedestrian point of view in that it's just not something I'm going to do. Um, I like it when these things are um, all nice and fitting properly right out of the box. And from my limited experience at this point, most of them are. Um, now that suggests that, you know, maybe this one, I've heard from other reviewers that when these things are assembled in China, uh, because of all of the temperature changes and pressure changes coming clear over here from that region of the world, things tend to you know expand and move and get jostled around, and sometimes you know that is a result. Um, I still say that you know some quality control probably could fix that, especially when they arrive here in the states. Uh, maybe it's just me. But outside of that, the fittings were, were, were nice. I did find that the Edo wrap was, the, the knots I could basically roll in my fingers, each one of them. Um, you know, I could push them around quite a bit. That was also a little bit of a downer. Um, but I couldn't get over just how really nice and broad the, the cutting surface of this blade was. I mean, it just has, it has a nice look, but then again, as you guys have heard in the previous videos, I'm a bit of a sucker for the uh, straightforward, no-nonsense, you know, the through-tempered style of these blades when they ne don't necessarily have the hamon line. They don't need it because this, again, is what they call, um, it's been mono-tempered. Now, for those of you who haven't heard my videos before and what that means, um, mono tempering is a process by which the entire blade, when it's tempered, um, is tempered at the same temperature and you have a uniform hardness throughout the entire blade. For 1060, apparently, this is preferable because the carbon content that is in 1060 yields very well to a single, a uniform tempering throughout the entire blade. It usually makes for a very tough blade. Um, it's sharp, as we already know. Now, how sharp will it stay? Well, you know, if I continually do the kind of testing you guys saw every day for six months, we'll see how it stands up to something that's, let's say, differentially tempered. Outside of that, for those of you who are worried about, you know, how much it's gonna dull, um, it's not that big of an issue. Um, and, you know, if you really are, you know, you got really got a Jones for, for this particular model and it starts to dull on, guess what? You can go out and get it sharpened. And because it doesn't have a hormone line, you don't have to worry about scratching it off. So, that's something that you can, you know, consider when looking at models like this. Um, so, to kind of wrap up here, um, would I buy this model again? I'm not so sure. Um, I'll, I'll admit, I'm, I'm a little bit iffy on, on that. Um, when I look at other models, you know, even things like Cold Steel or 
uh, the Raptor series. Those models are very comparable in price point. In fact, they're almost exactly the same price point. You know, they're in that 300-ish, some sub $400 range, and yet I've gotten models from both of those companies, and they come to me. They came to me in better shape than this one did. Uh, mind you, the Cold Steel Warrior King with its its Saya all banged up here, but quite honestly, Saya damage and that kind of stuff is is secondary to me as far as you know in comparison to the condition of the sword itself. And so, so I would say, you know, at the end of the day, is it worth your money? If you're interested in doing a compare and contrast between a bunch of heavy cutters, yes. If you're looking for the one, especially in this price point and this kind of category of katanas, meaning something that's going to do a lot of heavy cutting in the backyard, not just tatami mats, you're going to be doing, you know, cutting up bottles, cutting up cardboard, and, you know, whatever you want. I would say no, it's not. Uh, there are models out there that have proven time and time again to be a little bit better, better quality control. I can't really say better aesthetics, but overall kind of just a better experience in the hand and um, probably will get to you in a little better condition than this one got to me. But again, like I said, if you're interested in a side-by-side -side comparison with some of these, it's worth taking a look at just to see how it matches up to some of the others. Um, so that's all I have for you today. I hope this has been informative. Uh, please subscribe down below. Take a look at the, uh, please fill in any comments. Let me know. Maybe your experiences with this particular one were different. Um, I always enjoy hearing about people's different experiences with these models and how they compare to mine. Sometimes they're completely different, sometimes people are saying, yep, that's exactly how I experienced it too. So it's always fun to, to see those, and I usually reply to them. Uh, so please take the time to uh, give me your responses. Hope it's been informative. We'll see you next time.